Well, I think there's been real progress since the last Landscapes Forum in continuing to make the scientific case around uh, climate smart agriculture and, of course, the, 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 the case for why forests are so important in the global uh, fight against climate change is, is, is well made and well established. The IPCC came in then in November and said that uh, to stay at two degrees, we effectively have to decarbonise by 2100. Um, if we're going to reach zero net emissions by 2100, then the role that landscapes play in climate solutions just becomes even more important and even more obvious if it wasn't already before. Uh, and so all of that sort of scientific work that's being done, great work being done by CCAFs and Bruce Campbell as part of the CGIR, etc., then that needs to continue. And then we need to continue to bolster the economic argument. I think there's a remarkable economic consensus now that perhaps the costs of growing green and building resilience aren't quite as high as we thought they were, that it is possible to do this. Um, but th those meet a political economy and a reality in landscape after landscape, country after country. And I think we've got to do a better job of showing how in each landscape and in each country um, the economics will work for the short-term needs of jobs and livelihoods and for the long-term needs of the climate. Well, understanding that climate is going to upend our, um, our mission objectives of uh, ending poverty by 2030 and building a shared prosperity means that we've had to really go inside and look at how we do our business. So since we had the last Landscapes Forum a year ago, we've now started really rolling out greenhouse gas accounting across all the major sectors that are implicated. We have agreed an internal price on carbon, a shadow price on carbon that we use in our economic calculations. Uh, we have uh, built out the tracking of climate finance, both in uh, mitigation and adaptation, and worked with our other MDB colleagues to be able to report that out on a mitigation basis and soon now on, on adaptation. Uh, we are working on a discount rate. Uh, we have to understand that the uh, that climate affects the long-term uh, benefits that from, from many of our investments. And so, uh, and finally, we have set a, a climate and disastrous screen on all of our lending in the poorest countries. Uh, we're even working on a resilience indicator now. So there's an, it, this, this equate, when you add it all up, this basically equates to a complete turnaround in the way in which we think about our business. In the last couple of years since the Landscape Forum started, we've, we've got more comfortable with the idea that we need to be working together, the agriculture community in all of its different shapes and sizes and the forest community in all of its shapes and sizes. But now I think that there's an urgent need to be able to bring our technical know-how, our programmatic know-how, uh, the different stakeholders and the financing mechanisms that have been developed uh, together in packages which are easy to use by developing country governments. Developing country governments can't have to build the capacity to deal with this uh, landscapes world. We have to uh, take the uh, transaction cost away from uh, in, uh, away from uh, countries that have little management bandwidth often, and, and just make it easy to use. That's going to be absolutely fundamental if we're going to get to speed and scale. Certainly, we in the bank are trying to present the finance windows in one mainstreamed package, and uh, I hope that that helps. And I hope in a year's time in Paris we'll be able to say that we have uh, really sped up and really scaled up our financing to landscapes.